Hello YouTube! I am Pinstar, and this is Airport CEO Strategy and Tactics Episode 7. So, in our last episode, we got our commercial flights up and running here. Um, and a few things I, uh, I had forgotten to mention um, in the last episode that I wanted to uh, point out here. So we are on the same day as we were before. Our uh, people are boarding uh, for this very last flight here. Um, now, first things you'll notice is that I'm only getting $2 per person here, where previously I was only getting 15 uh, the reason for that is I have um, I have adjusted our fees and actually voluntarily lowered our passenger handling fee down to two bucks. Um, and there's a reason for that. Um, first off, the um, the this light aircraft landing fee, yeah, that applies to light commercial flights too. Uh, so we are hitting the airlines up for uh, for double uh, dollar duty here, and yet. Um, the whole Avgas discount and also the small stand parking minor discount here, that doesn't apply to them. Commercial air flights get Jet A1, not Avgas. Um, so, um, normally I'd want to price things to keep the airlines happy. There's a problem with that at the moment, though. Airlines happiness has not been implemented yet. Airlines will always, in this current version, be solidified at 50%, no matter what you do. Even if you, um, you know, delay them and move the flights all over the place and just have insanely high prices for them, they won't care. Um, their, their happiness will remain at 50%. Now, that being said, I can't imagine that will stay like that. Um, they just need to develop the, the, uh, the sort of the approval ratings, uh, for airlines. So what I'm going to do here, so I'm not gaming the system too much, is pretend like the airline system works approximately the same way as general aviation. Um, being that, you know, they're willing to accept higher prices if they have lower prices elsewhere. Um, now, the passenger handling fee is rather low, and I'm going to assume that the your ability to get flights um, processed on time without delays is also going to be a factor in their happiness. And since I am pretty confident in our ability to not have them delayed, I'm going to say that there's going to be some other invisible force pushing their happiness upwards uh, to help uh, uh, counteract this. All right. Now, the other thing, as far as why, um, and I never explained this, why our um, uh, uh, commercial aircraft flights are so lucrative. It's not necessarily because of the landing fees, because, well, I mean, we get that same amount of money from general aviation. And the passengers, yes, that's the thing. It's that. See that 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 twenty nine hundred dollars that just uh, fired up when he started backing up. Uh, every contract has a per air per flight fee that's agreed upon in that contract, and those are in the thousands of dollars. So that is an extra fee that you get upon completing the edge of that contract. There. Uh, so that is the main reason. Why? Uh, the other reason is the actual end of contract completion bonus, which we're not going to get for this one because we have two more flights for them. Um, but we it's it's that added fund that uh, tacked on there that makes this uh, a lot more uh, a lot more lucrative than just wallowing in general aviation. Now then, I'm going to go ahead and advance time to midnight. So today we're going to be focusing really heavily on ideal schedule flight planning uh, and also prepping the groundwork for uh, go getting into medium flights or medium sized planes here. Uh, we are still going to do another day of, uh, of of our four light ones, but we'll be expanding soon enough. Right now, I want to focus on getting our flight planner looking real pretty and giving you some tips to that. So tip number one when it comes to that is don't take any additional airport or airline contract until after midnight of the day that you're going to be scheduling flights. Uh, because uh, all flights and all contracts have sort of a counter uh, 
of, of, of how many days it takes you to, to uh, process them, I like to start at the beginning of a day to give us that entire day to uh, uh, satisfy that. Uh, so wait until after midnight to do any of your flight planning. In fact, this is the best time to do your flight planning. Um, now, second tip here is if you've got any extra, any extra uh, flights left over, schedule them first uh, so that you can get them out of the way so you don't accidentally let them linger and possibly overextend and, and not meet the, the deadline for your contract for them. I don't actually remember what the day's deadline for mine is, but the shortest it can be is two days. So this would be the second day. Uh, but the longest I've seen is like four days, not counting the, the, uh, the repeating daily ones. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and schedule these, and we're going to want to get a couple more before we start scheduling all of those. So well, let's look at our airlines. And again, we don't want the recurring flight, so any of those we'll reject. Um, now, normally what I do, if we didn't have any leftovers, I would say we want to get two contracts that have a seven-day flight and one contract that has a six uh, because the, that combination will give us, will fill up completely and exactly uh, four slots. Now, being that we have two leftovers, if we can find three, six uh, flight contracts, we'll be in the clear. So let's take a look and see if we can't find sixes. Nope, that's a seven. That's a six. We'll, we'll get the six. That's a seven. That's a seven. That's a six. Do we have a, do we have a third six? We do. We have a third six. That's wonderful. All right. So with our three sixes plus the two leftovers, we uh, we can fill up our flight planner here as such. All right. So now here is the the meat and potato of my of my flight planning suggestion tips and tricks, if you will. So what you want to do is obviously the very first flight of the day you want straight at 5 a.m. And this is why we couldn't do this yesterday because we had those general aviation flights sitting on the uh, on our stands taking up variable amounts of time. But now they are empty so we can start right when the when the FAA allows us to. So boom, right here at 5 a.m. Now you can schedule another flight at 5 a.m. But don't. Don't. Nope. 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 That's bad because the, the, air, the, the, the runway can only handle, you know, one flight at a time. And even though it is quite efficient, that's not it, it can't handle two flights that are scheduled. One of those flights are going to be delayed, period. So what you want to do is you want to space it out by 20 minutes. 20 minutes is the ideal space time um, at this juncture. I'll explain more uh, later. Now, as far as your formation here goes, again, 20 minutes from each one. So that was 5, this is 520, this one's going to be scheduled for 540. And then you, Mr. Ruski, is going to get it at 6. So once you've established sort of your front line here, then all you need to do is just sandwich in flights back to back uh, with it so that they can squeeze in. Um, now, the other tip I have here is do your contracts completely before you move into flights for the next one. So we finished off our two flights from our previous day's contract. So that will finish that contract. Once these two flights complete, we will get that end of contract bonus. Now we're working on the CLM contract here. So we're going to just we're just going to slot in as opposed to just filling up a single stand all the way across. Fill them in like this. Um, because that way, earlier in the day, your your contracts will be uh, processed and completed. And, uh, you know, as soon as, you know, shortly after noon, this, the entirety of the CLM contract will be done. This, by the way, is why it's better to do your one-shot contracts rather than recurring, because the recurring day contracts have, at a minimum, five whole days that they have to recur on before you get that end of contract bonus. Here, with our one-shots, you can claim the end of contract bonus on the same day that you take the damn contract, uh, because you just get it out of the way all that faster. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and get, uh, we'll mix things up a little bit. Sometimes they force you to have a little bits and pieces of spaces in there. Just slide them in as close as you can. 
like this. Now, uh, I'm doing this uh, this one here on camera and on commentary for future flights. Obviously, I will be fast forwarding because I will admit this is kind of tedious. That being said, it is worth the tedium in this particular case um, because these these you get more money for these one shot contracts than you do uh, the recurring ones. Now, as we get developed, as things progress along, as we um, you know, get, get through our system and get more and more stands up and running, um, doing one shots will become untenable. Uh, at that point we will be, we'll be starting to make use of our recurring ones. But my rule of thumb is until you get your baggage system up and running, which is going to be a, a later, later episode, uh, stick to just the one shot. So we've got our whole day here. We cannot squeeze in anymore. We've used up all of our flights on all of our contracts. So taking more contracts would make absolutely no sense. So we are good to go. Now, we've also got this amount of money in the bank. And we do want to spend it on prepping for medium flights. Now, the first step in that might seem like to build a medium stand. And we do want to build a medium stand. However, there's a few other things that we need to do. Well... Maybe need to do is it too strong of a word. At the moment, the game doesn't force you to go to upgrade your runways or your taxiways. We could handle medium planes on grass runways and grass single line stands here, but that just doesn't sit well with me. Uh, I, I think you're, you're, you're meant to upgrade those to concrete before you're, you should be allowed to uh, handle the medium flight. So as such, I'm going to make that a self-imposed rule here, even though the simulation will not enforce it, I'm going to enforce it on myself. So when upgrading to that, you want to repair the runway and then you can upgrade to asphalt. Uh, little side note here, I wish uh, upgrading from grass to asphalt uh, would auto repair the thing for free because essentially you're paving over all the torn up grass. So it doesn't matter if the grass is kind of damaged because you're paving over it. But regardless, just a suggestion. Uh, and then do likewise over here, repair and upgrade you to asphalt. So that will put a big chunk of hurt on our finances here, but we're not done. We want to start uh, upgrading our, uh, our, our uh, tarmacs here. Uh, or rather our taxiways, and we're also going to actually make them properly wide. Right now, we've just been getting away with a single tile long taxiway here. We need to actually make them as wide as they're really supposed to be. Now, for small planes, their width is um, is three wide as far as their wingspan goes, as far as the, the, the game goes. But for medium flights, their wingspan goes five tiles wide. So we are going to be building building our, our taxiways here five tiles wide. And we're going to start down here at the bottom like that. And then five tiles wide on our main spine here is going to be the name of the game. Now we're probably going to run out of money just as we get up there. Yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll make it back soon enough. Uh, yeah, in fact, we're going to go a little bit into debt here. That's okay. Um, it's not cr mission critical right this second. And like I said, we'll get it back soon enough. So let's fast forward to the next day so that we can get our passengers coming in and uh, get, get, get to the business of making some money. You know, we made, we made about um, 100, 150K yesterday. So we should be making about that much here. So my goal is to end up with enough money to be able to build my medium stand and finish off the last bits and pieces of this uh, taxiway as well. Yeah, I know I need to build a few more of these. I, I will get on that once once I'm once we have that in there. So there's a couple of benefits and, and, and the whole part of the reasons why I built these the way they are is not only does it stagger their landing times, meaning that this single runway, um, you know, they're not going to delay each other by all trying to land at the same time. It also staggers 
all of the other operations within your airport here. Um, the stands will be opening 20 minutes apart from each other. Therefore, people will be going to them 20 minutes apart from each other. Therefore, um, the people and rushes of mobs going through your security will be 20 minutes apart. And therefore, you know, the earlier flight will have 20 minutes to cook through your security line before the next group of people come in there. Um... And also, it helps um, decongest your taxiways as not everyone's trying to cram in at the same time. Uh, so there's a number of different benefits for that. It also spreads out the landings uh, so that you don't have a gigantic mob of people waiting for your uh, buses to uh, take them home once, there are, uh, once they're going home. And it also spreads out the mob so that your toilets are not overwhelmed. You know, because you got a whole group of people on there, some percentage of which is going to pop up and uh, utilize the toilet. I did set these male, female, right? Yes. Okay, good. So you see now that one, that one flight passed. Now this flight's going to disembark. Some percentage of them is going to you are going to go into the toilets. Note how they are split approximately in half, so that we, uh, you know, no one bathroom is overwhelmed. You know, if we made them both unisex, they might all try to go to what they perceive as the closest one and just completely overwhelm it while the other one gets ignored. Here, we force them to go to two different bathrooms to spread out the use. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's speed things up a bit. We're already uh, we're already making cash money, and the day is just getting started. Now, um, note here, here's our, our, our two um, Skylink flights, our morning Skylink flight. These two are um, these two are the remnants of our last contract here. Uh, and once these two uh, depart, then we're going to get uh, uh, a little goodie in the form of our end of contract bonus. See that 13,000 we've got there? Um, let's see if I can catch it before it... Ah, never mind. Um... It gives you a chunk of change uh, at the end of the contract. Let me just let me see if I can see what one of these here. It actually says the dollar amount that you get for the um, end of contract bonus. There is a there is a little on end of contract bonus that you get, um, or at least it seem you seem to get uh, upon finishing one completely. But no matter, we're still getting tons of cash in here. And our traffic is flowing, same as before. So our stands are empty, and as soon as they're all empty, we've got the first arrival for the next 20 minutes, and then the next one comes. And the nice thing is, oh, here's the other reason why I like naming the stands. If we look at our arrivals uh, here, we you can actually see what gate they're going to. It actually, uh, it actually um, you know, shortens them. So Mr. Ruski, we know, is going to gate MR. Um, you know, uh, Dana Black is going to D DAN. Michael's going to Mike. Uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and then Bar is to uh, Bart Opiel. All right, so let's get our... Um, let's see, we should have enough scratch for our... Taxiway here. Yep, that will take us the rest of the way up to there. Excellent. And then the rest of our funds are going to uh, be saved up for our uh, medium size. So let's just get this stuff built because we don't want them distracted on here. Now, when doing a me when prepping for a medium stand, there's a few other things that we're going to want to put down that we do not want to forget. Um, one's going to be a pair of checking check-in desks. Medium stands require two of these as opposed to the one each for the smalls. So you're going to want to put down two checking de check-in desks. And we're already starting to lag our simulation here a little bit. Um, we're also going to need a single boarding desk. Uh, and I can tell you from where I know I'm going to be placing this, the boarding desk is going to go right here. So we might as well place those so we don't forget them. 
uh, so that once our cash raises to the level of uh, 150k, which uh, I might add is our price for a medium stand, we'll be all lined up and ready to go. But right now we're getting a nice shiny new tarmac, or I keep saying tarmac, taxiway. Um, and all right, well, we've got our contractors cut out for them. They're going to be, they've got a lot of boxes to deliver. So this is why I wanted to take care of this sooner rather than later. Uh, and also build these sooner rather than later. Oh, the other thing we want to do is get another security station in place. So I'm going to mark that for demolition. Um, basically, you're going to you're going to need a large security per uh, large or per medium stand because it generates that much traffic. Thank you for waiting for our commercial flight. Most appreciated. Most appreciated. And we got our guys swarming across the tarmac here. And more and more people swarming in here, uh, checking in for their flights. And this time we will have a full boat of flights for all of ours. As you can see, these are all, um, you know, getting checked off. Why are you considered en route? Did you not, did you not happen? Mm -hmm. Might be a display bug. How we doing here? And it delayed. Yeah, sometimes you'll get them saying delayed. Um, but as long as they're not delayed too heavily. Um, yeah, this one's delayed by 10 minutes. Probably, yeah, because of general, uh, general aviation kind of got in the way. I'm still at odds as to whether or not we need we should shut down general aviation completely. Oop, looks like our contractors are done and are all trying to swarm into the break room. Good God. Um, well, here, let's give them something else to do in the form of, uh, uh, of our security. Well, you know, we can get the extra security checkpoint up. I want to save up for um, the stand itself. Otherwise, we're, uh, we're going to be in... Uh, uh, we're going to be in a little trouble. Well, we're not going to be in trouble, but we're going to have to wait a whole other day. And nobody wants to do that. You guys want to see a medium flight in action, don't you? Don't you? I know you do. How are we doing on our uh, wear and tear? Not bad. We can put it off an extra day before we repair them. Since funds are, well, critical at the moment. Well, crit again, not not that we are in the... in in eminent danger of going bankrupt but we want to hit that 150 mark uh in order to uh build our stand and get working on it because we've already built the rest of the infrastructure needed for it uh so i'm um, yeah we're just going to depend on these last couple of flights and maybe the end of contract bonus here if we can swing it we're at 130 i don't know if we're going to have that i have the scratch for it so we might need to implement it in the middle of the day uh tomorrow which is not ideal yeah see how we got 10,000 there but that wasn't at the end of the uh that was our end of contract we went from 130 to 140 and then we're gonna get there that didn't even get added to here that ten thousand dollars was the end of contract bonus i'm not crazy there is a kind of contract bonus Ugh. but unfortunately it is not enough sadness such sadness and we we're so close we're so close Oh, man, I am so tempted to grab a loan just to push us over the uh, the barrier here, especially uh, especially since we're going to be making so much scratch from our medium aircraft. By the way, we're going to be maxing that out. Uh, let's take a look at our cheap loan and see if we can't just quickly repay it, because I just want to get that in place, and I'm sure you guys want to see that in action. Uh, game, thank you. Uh, let's see, 6% interest, 160, that's, yes, way more than we need. I just need a $10,000 loan. But you're going to cost me an arm and a leg. Um, what I'll do is I'll take this loan, I'll build what I need, and then as soon as we get the cash to, uh, um, 
build that in there and get that programmed in uh, for tomorrow, or rather get enough revenue from all of our flights, I'll just pay it right back early so it's not sitting on our books. So fine, we'll take a loan because I'm impatient and you're impatient, I can tell. Um, so yeah, we could do two. Of, no, I'm not doing two at once. That's that's asking for a world of hurt. When you, when you do these, you want to do them one at a time to make sure that your traffic patterns are livable. So here, we're going to place this one all the way right here at the cap. It's almost as if I planned this uh, terminal uh, to be exactly this size so it can fit one of these on the end and be exactly this far from, from, the, from our main spine here. Now, to help the, give these planes a little priority in backing out, I'm going to go ahead and put a holding point right here. Oh, and um, one of my viewers pointed out correctly that I am missing a holding point right here um, that would um, pre otherwise prevent a uh, my my um, windproofing route here from working properly in the event that the winds turn against us. We have still not yet seen the winds turn against us, uh, so we are fortunate in that regard. Um, so, yeah... Let's uh, let's fast forward here. Um, oh yeah, let's also with that cash build our se our, our um, second security checkpoint. I'm still not going to deal with queues yet, um, but they're coming. They're coming. I promise. Um, they uh, we're we're going to have a whole episode on queues. Um, and, and some of the minutia that you want to get into with them. But again, it's hard to really demonstrate them until you've got yourself, um, you, until you've got yourself enough crowds to real, really warrant them. All right. Looks like we've got a troll box. Oh, well, we got a troll box, but we got the extra contractor for it. Nice. I, I just took a wild guess at that one because we're dealing with multi-box items here. All right, so we've got that. We do need more um, security personnel, but that is obtained easily enough. Uh, bada boom, bada bing, bada bang, bada boom, bada bing. All right, these are up and running. Excellent. And same as before, uh, we got to connect our stand here. We do want to make sure that we have uh, two stationed aircraft staff for this one. You need the extra manpower. Uh, mark that as commercial. Open the stand. We'll set our pushback point to be a little bit closer there. <coughs> Excuse me. And of course, we got to uh, we got to name our stand here, and I've got another one of my patrons here, Thibo. So this will be the Thibo stand. Uh, oh, one other thing here, so this little kitty corner here. Um, we want to make sure this is marked as secure, so that our ramp agents can get around and path to it. Okay, we are here at midnight, which means we have a clean slate. Well, actually, we know we don't have a clean slate. That's that's a glitch. That 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 that'll disappear on its own once I restart the game. Um, so, uh, in on that note, we also have new contract options, medium flights. Um, at least I think we have new contract options. Yeah, small flights here and medium contracts, things that involve medium-sized planes. Once you build one of these stands, you get into these kind of contracts. So what's the best way to handle our medium uh, flight thing, our, our medium-sized flights? Uh, you're going to have to wait till next episode. Sorry. Uh, so if you like this episode and you want to see more like it, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and leave me a comment, good, bad, or indifferent. Your feedback's always welcome. So until next time, this has been Pinstar signing out. See ya!